Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, please help us work well today and uh, have a good day of meditation, of work, um, of pleasure in you and your goodness. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so this is not a live video. Um, I've been experimenting with video quality over the past few days, um, so I'm probably not going to do live videos that much anymore for this advent vlogging thing. Um, so yeah. Okay, so um, today I want to read a little bit uh, of something to you out of a short book by C.S. Lewis called Reflections on the Psalms. So anyway, C.S. Lewis talks briefly in one of the chapters about the possibility of um, a, a pagan prophecy that could actually be referring to the birth of Christ. This is a prophecy that obviously takes place before Christ's birth, so it's interesting to hear what he has to say about it. Okay, so C.S. Lewis is actually going to be talking about Virgil, one of Virgil's works. Okay, so he says, Now let us take a somewhat tougher instance. The non-classical reader needs to know that to a Roman, the age or reign of Saturn meant the lost age of innocence and peace. That is, it roughly corresponded to the Garden of Eden before the fall. Though it was never, except among the Stoics, of anything like comparable importance. Virgil, writing not very long before the birth of Christ, begins a poem thus. The great procession of the ages begins anew. Now the Virgin returns. The reign of Saturn returns and the new child is sent down from high heaven. He says it goes on to describe the paradisal age which this nativity will usher in. And of course, throughout the Middle Ages, it was taken that some dim prophetic knowledge of the birth of Christ had reached Virgil, probably through the Sibylline books. He ranked as a pagan prophet. Modern scholars would, I suppose, laugh at the idea they might differ as to what noble or imperial couple were being thus extravagantly complimented by a court poet on the birth of a son, but the resemblance to the birth of Christ would be regarded once more as an accident. To say the least of it, however, this is a much more striking accident than the slave's words to the man in the baths. This was an example he used earlier. If this is luck, it is extraordinary luck. So what's the difference, you might ask, between Virgil's poem and the birth of Christ as depicted in scripture? Um, I would say the main difference is that everything the Bible says about the nativity of Christ actually happened. It's the truth. Jesus truly came down, was born of a virgin, suffered and died for our sins to redeem us. Our Lord is truth. I encourage you to search for the truth today. God bless.